So my name is Isaac and I'm going to present what's in an index extracting domain specific knowledge graphs from textbooks. So in my previous work, I have used textbooks to construct uh, knowledge graphs from them. And in these uh, knowledge graphs, we can represent information about the structure of the textbooks, that is the sections and subsections. Also information about the content, words, lines, and paragraphs for each of the sections. And we can also represent information about the domain. And for this, we use the index terms that uh, are part of the textbook. So for example, in a book about statistics, we have terms like uh, mean or scatter plot. And one important aspect is that we have linked uh, these uh, knowledge uh, models of graphs with the information from DBpedia. So specifically, we can identify the index terms from the textbook that have a corresponding resource in DBPD. So we have used the back of the book index to create a representation of a domain. So we can extract the, the domain about, uh, the knowledge about the domain using these terms. But at the same time, we have noticed that not all the index terms are equally representative of the domain of the textbook. And an index cannot be 100% fully objective and neutral model because it's also a representation of the author's thoughts. But what we know is that the index section follows the purpose of a textbook, and that is to introduce a domain to a novice. So if we have a series of index terms, for example, uh, mean, scatter plot, summation of pure coin we will have some index terms that are very relevant for the domain of the textbook and some other terms will be irrelevant. So we can create or we have a scale about relevance and we can place all these index terms in one position of this scale. So the problem is that if we create these uh, textbook knowledge models, depending on the textbooks that were used to create uh, those models, they can suffer from low domain specificity. And if we use these models, for example, as uh, input for adaptive systems, the systems can guide to the students to irrelevant uh, terms. Also identifying the uh, domain specificity information is a time consuming and complex task. So the goal for this uh, research has been to automatically analyze the index terms to identify their relevance according to the domain of the textbook. And for this, we want to classify each index term into one of possible uh, labels. The first one core domain to identify the key terms in the domain of the textbook, in domain to identify additional terms that belong to the domain, related domain terms, uh, terms that belong to related domains, and out of domain terms that uh, don't belong to the domain and are not related. For example, terms that are used for pedagogical reasons. And it's important to say that usually this classification is binary, either a term is considered to be part of the domain or not, and in our case, we are using four different labels. So our intuition to solve this problem was to use DBpedia because we already link the index terms to the resources in this knowledge base and because DBpedia has a categorization system. So for example, if we have a term, in this case mean, we can just start from the uh, domain of interest and then look into the subcategories of this main category in DBpedia until we found uh, until we find the uh, resource or term that we are looking for. But this has some problems. The first one is that the categorization system has sub and super categories, and one uh, resource or term can be linked to the main domain either, or actually using both subcategories and super categories. So this provides some ambiguity. 
The second problem is that even if we only use subcategories, very unrelated things can be connected to the main domain, for example, Eurocoin, and this is just because of the nature of the categorization system in DBpedia. Then we can also use super categories, but not all the super categories are relevant for the main domain. And finally, our resource can be connected to the main uh, domain using multiple paths, and we want to assess which one is more relevant. So basically what we want to do in our approach is to find this area of influence of a domain and then all the resources that are inside this area belong to the main domain. And for, to do this, we use the information from DBpedia, but not only the categorization system, also information about the links, how the resources are connected, and the abstracts from those resources. And we combine that information with the information that we can uh, extract from the textbooks. So now you see an overview of the approach and I'm going to explain each step. The first one is about initialization. We define the target or root uh, domain and all the index terms that were linked to resources in DBpedia, we create two groups. The first one is the, the seed resources, and those are resources that are considered to belong to the domain. And this is because they are very close to the target domain. We also create a textual representation of the domain using the abstracts from all these resources. And the second group are the remaining resources that uh, were connected to TVP. And the final or the other four steps they just try to identify uh, the label for each of the index terms in one of the four that we define. So in the next step, identification of domain concepts, we take each resource that belongs to this group, to the seed resources, and uh, we try to find the path that connects the root domain to this resource using only subcategories. And for each, uh, category in this path, we compute a score. This score is computed uh, measuring the similarity between all the resources of the category against the root uh, domain. Then we also use the information about how many resources link directly to the root domain and also the similarity between this category and the previous category in the path because this resource uh, belongs to the seed set, we just classify the resource as part of the domain. We do that with all the remaining resources in this group, and then we move on to the other group of linked resources to DBpedia. The approach is the same. We compute a path using subcategories. We compute the score for each category in this path, but now the final score, we measure it against some thresholds, and if the score is above, above uh, those thresholds, then we can classify this resource to be part of the domain. For the remaining resources in this group that were not classified as part of the domain, now we try to see if they belong to related domains. So now we uh, put the resource, we compute a path, but in this case, the path uses a super category that connects the resource with the root domain and we compute the scores for each category. And if the score is above some thresholds, then this resource can be considered to be uh, from a related domain. In the third step, for all the remaining resources that were not classified, we just consider that uh, they belong to other domains are, are not related to the target uh, domain. And in the last step, we take the resources that were already classified as part of the domain, and we check the most used concepts through textbooks and DBpedia. And those resources, we consider them to be the core concepts in the domain, and we change the label, uh, sorry, the label if we identify some of them. So at the end of, the, of our approach, we will have a graph like this, where we have resources that belong to the domain and also some resources that are connected to the main domain uh, from other uh, domains, from related domains. And we can also identify the irrelevant resources. 
it's important to say that these thresholds, they measure the, this area of influence of the target domain, and they were calibrated after several experiments, but they are flexible and robust at the same time because the same thresholds work pretty well on very different domains. So they are not specific for um, a concrete domain. For our evaluation, we tested uh, two main aspects. The first one, the validity. So we measured the accuracy of the identified labels in two very different domains, statistics and ancient philosophy. And we also test the application of this approach. For the first evaluation and the first domain about statistics, we measured the accuracy of identifying core domain and in-domain concepts. And we used 10 introductory statistics, statistics textbooks. For creating a ground truth to validate the classification, we use the intersection of six statistical glossaries for identifying core domain terms. And to identify in-domain uh, terms, we use a list of statistical articles that we can find in Wikipedia. So the results, when first only we use two labels, so we classify everything that is in domain and then everything that's, that is outside of the main domain we uh, reach an accuracy of 92%. And we also compare it against a baseline that only uses the categorization system of DBpedia. In this case, the, the accuracy is still higher. Now, when we incorporate an extra label, so we want to measure uh, or find the core domain, in domain, and terms that belong to other domains. In this case, uh, we can see that the difference between our approach and the baseline is more than 10 points. And we can actually identify the core domains with high precision compared to the precision from the baseline that is quite low. When we move to our second uh, domain for evaluation, ancient philosophy, we tested the accuracy of in-domain, everything that is in-domain, related domain and out of domain. For this one, we use only one textbook about Greek and Roman philosophy, and the ground truth was created manually. Here, when we measure the results using three labels, we can see that the accuracy of our approach is 20 points more than the baseline, and that we can reach quite good precision and recall across all the three labels. For our second evaluation about the application of our approach, we tested if domain specificity information is useful for a web search system for textbooks. And we used three models. The first model only uh, retrieves document using the content of the sections. The second model, the content plus information about index terms. And the third model, the content, the index term, and domain specificity label or information. We use two statistic textbooks. Uh, we tested this using 150 queries that were extracted from uh, syllabi. And the ground truth was created manually by three experts. To measure the results, we uh, use NDCG that measures the effectiveness of retrieving the most relevant document. At position one, three, and five of this ranked list. And then we can see that the model that uses domain specificity information gets the best results out of three. This shows that this information provides value. So to conclude, uh, we have explored how textbook indices can be used to extract high quality knowledge graphs in narrow domains. We can automat automatically label terms in relation to the main subject of a textbook using DBpedia. And we have extended the traditional binary classification into four different labels. And in the future work, we want to combine this domain specificity information with powerful language models. So for example, we want to explore informed word embeddings, where the index terms can be can use different weights according to the domain specificity. And the idea is that this will reflect uh, the domain of interest in the words embeddings. With this, I thank you for listening and I am open to any questions.
Well, many thanks for this clear presentation, Isaac. So we have here a question in the chat. So have you manually annotated your data to compute the accuracy? Yeah, so for, uh, we measure two, two, we related two domains. So for the statistics domain was automatically annotated. So for finding the true labels, we intersected six statistical glossaries that was um, done automatically. And also this list of statistical articles in Wikipedia is available. So we just took the list. And for the domain of uh, ancient philosophy, yeah, we annotated the data manually. And it's important to say that these uh, ground truths are available online, so they can be reused for other approaches. Okay, and how, because in this case, you only have one person. So how you, you manage this agreement if only one person was annotating this? And in the case that you have three people annotating, how this agreement was managed? And what, are, what were the characteristics of these annotators? How did you select them? Yeah, so in this case, we only use one. For the other application, we used three students of statistics. So they were experts and then we could measure the agreement. In this case, for the ancient philosophy, it was just one person, in this case, me. And uh, for example, because the domain was about Greek and Roman philosophy, I use an encyclopedia about Greek and Roman philosophy to actually try to identify the resources that were part of the domain. Mm. But this may be a weak part, right? Because it's like if you only have one person doing the annotation, and in addition, it's the same person who is related to the project, so that may generate some bias. So this yeah. is something that needs should be extended. Another yeah. thing that I was I was wondering is this linking to DBpedia. How how you have evaluated the quality of this linking? Because there are several tools and techniques to link short tests into DBpedia, but the quality uh, varies. So you have many different uh, accuracy and some of them are not very high in yeah. accuracy. So can you explain us how that was performed? Yeah, so that uh, research um, you can find also in, in a previous publication. So in this case, we use uh, the ICI glossary of statistical terms. So this is a comprehensive glossary of statistical terms. And then uh, we link that to, to the Wikipedia first the glossary, and then it was revised by some also students about statistics. And then we computed, uh, or we link using our approach, and then we compute it against that ground truth that was computed using the glossary and revised by some experts in statistics. 